Hello, I wanted to talk you through where you might need a ground strip on a flood barrier and how to install one. So if you look at the bottom of a flood barrier, you'll see there's a thick seal that compresses down. But to get the maximum seal, you want a completely flat and level surface for it to compress down onto. So it's not going to be ideal on tarmac where you've got gaps or on block paving where you've got gaps. You want a flat and level, smooth surface. So if it's not flat and level, we offer a ground strip. Now, here's one I made earlier. So the ground strip you'll see, if I show you down the length of that, is a U-shaped channel, but these bits actually slot into the ground. So it doesn't go like that, it goes like that. So completely flat and level when it's installed for the barrier to compress down onto, giving you the maximum seal, maximum watertight effect of the barrier. Now you might be wondering what these holes are for. Now that's so when it's set into the ground, usually using M60 or M90 concrete, the concrete can go through the holes and really grab onto the ground strip so that it becomes part of the foundation structure. So to install one of these, if I show you some images, you use a grinder to cut out a channel and then you're going to concrete this into the ground so it gives you a flat and level surface. Let's pop this back down here. So you'll see here, and then this photo shows it installed. Now the gap in the middle is for a demountable post, but it's a smooth, flat and level surface once that's installed, so no trip hazard. We actually, on this one, if you look at the two, also as part of the job, just swap the drain covers to make it as neat as possible for the client. But I'll show you some other examples as well. So here, for instance, is a flood barrier that's been installed with rail packing to avoid the uh, doorstep that protrudes, if you can see that there. And we put a ground strip in because it was block paving that's been set in concrete. Now you'll also spot there's a little black pad under the rail. Now that's a neoprene pad that the rail gets set onto so that in the corner you get the best seal. Another example here for you, you'll see the ground strip that looks really, really neat when it's in place with the barrier compressed down onto it. Again, you see, just see the neoprene pads. Really, really good finish there. Now there are a couple of occasions where a ground strip might not be needed. For instance, if you've already got a flat and level foundation, maybe you're installing on a garage floor that's completely smooth, flat and level. Or for instance, on uh, in this occasion where the customer was having a whole new driveway and as part of that, they had a new foundation laid with the demountable posts, uh, demountable post sockets cast into the ground. So because this was flat and level, there was no ground strip installed. And actually, if you go on our website, you'll see this barrier deployed with water really, really deep on one side and the house dry on the other. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile having a look at actually the photos up in our office as well, because it's so impressive. Now, there are some other occasions as well where we've worked without a ground strip, but for the most part, we do recommend them. So if you see this photo here, the client was really concerned about the barrier being as inobtrusive as possible. So the rails were actually mounted on the back of the pillars. And then you'll see on the ground, instead of having a ground strip, the block paving was lifted out. There was a foundation set in, but it was concrete, flat, smooth level. And we put a red dye in it so that it matched the block paving and you'll see really an impressive finish there. And that cap is just for a compression post. So hopefully that explains how you'd install the ground strip, why you need it, and a little bit more in the process of getting your flood barrier installed to work as effectively as possible, which is ultimately our goal to help you reduce your flood risk. So I am Simon Crowther. We're going to do more of these helpful videos on things from insulation through to advice, and ultimately how to manage flood risk. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we will see you on the next video.